Texas 1980. Ronald Reagan is campaigning for presidency, the southern states find themselves beset by a scorching heat wave, and to make matters worse, there's now a zombie outbreak. This is Into the Dead, Our Darkest Days, where you lead a ragtag group of desperate survivors hoping to constantly stay ahead of the infection that has engulfed Walton City. In this video, I'll be introducing the game to you guys, talking about what we can expect in a bit more detail, and voicing one or two of my concerns about the game as well. If you enjoy the video or find that Into the Dead is one that you want to keep an eye on, drop this video a like and subscribe for more stuff like this on all things zombie games. Now, very quickly, all of the footage you're going to see in this video is kindly provided by the developers at Pickpock, and they were good enough to find some time at Gamescom recently, where I was actually able to play a couple of missions of the game itself and ask some questions to the developers. It's still very early in development right right now with a demo available in October of 2024 on Steam and early access slated for sometime in 2025. Keep in mind this footage will be rough around the edges in places and doesn't necessarily represent the final product. Lastly, the initial release is planned for PC with potential for console release later on. Okay, so with those disclaimers out of the way, let's start with the basics. Into the Dead Our Darkest Days is a 2D side scroller, or rather, as the devs say, a 2.5D side-scroller. Now, what they mean by this is while the character's movement will mainly be side to side, there are occasions where you can duck into cover in the background or foreground, and on the same token, the infected can come forward into the active lane that your character is on in some very interesting ways, mostly if you go making noise or find another way to draw their attention. Pulling off convincing combat, however, in a 2D environment like this can be challenging, especially when the game is more grounded and realistic. That said, they've certainly managed to sell some atmospherics. The environments are immersive, there are some nail-biting encounters, and the stealth gameplay is both satisfying and rewarding. The setting for the game itself, as I mentioned earlier in this video, is 80s Texas, and the developers have done a pretty good job of reflecting that in some of their design choices, whether that be evident from the world itself and the levels you'll be making your way through, or more subtle aspects like the font choice, the outfit design and the hairstyles for characters. It's not overbearing by any means, but all the same it's noticeable and helps bring a unique vibe to the whole experience. Things are tense, even heart-stopping at times, but you've still got those cultural undertones from the era. Hope, disco, rainbows of colours, and all of that is very much still there. I don't know exactly how long the outbreak has been going on before we jump into the game, but it's certainly not long. You feel as though you're very much still in the midst of a world that is consumed by panic. That's only further reinforced by the game's overarching goal, which is to stay ahead of the infection as best you can. Talking to the developers at Gamescom, it's very clear that they want this to be a big driving force, and not for the player to get too comfortable in their chosen safe house. Yes, you'll be able to settle down for a while, but eventually you will need to move on, and as such I can imagine that means you'll explore more and more. It's an interesting way of keeping the game from becoming too stagnant, seeing the same locations over and over, or spending too much time in one area. Now, that brings me nicely to the safe house system. Into the Dead isn't all about scavenging and fighting the infected, it's also about guiding your characters through living in the developing disaster they find themselves in. At the start of the game, you pick a duo or a couple of characters, each with their own benefits and downsides. Think State of Decay 2 if you need a reference point, it's very similar. That said, you're going to come across other survivors, and before long, you'll probably have three or four folks hanging around your base. Each of these playable characters can be put to work in your safe house on a turn-based system. You could spend the turn having all of your characters work on a different task, such as repairing barricades, building and repairing weaponry, or taking a much-needed rest. Alternatively, you can take one of your characters out on a scavenging run, while the rest carry out tasks at home. The infected will constantly be damaging your barricades, and these attacks progressively become more severe, doing more damage and encouraging you to seek safer refuge somewhere else, perhaps with more facilities like a kitchen to cook food for your group. 
Again, the idea is that a wave of infection is slowly spreading and you're trying to stay ahead of the game. One thing I made sure to ask the developers when I had the chance to sit down with them was what their approach was going to be with regards to the zombies themselves. Namely, were we going to see special infected types reminiscent of games like Left 4 Dead or State of Decay, for example, where we could expect varied challenges simply from the abilities some enemies might have. Into the Dead will stick to a more grounded and realistic approach, opting not to include special infected types. They made special mention that the only exception was that some zombies will let out an ear-piercing scream to call nearby infected if they discover you and aren't quickly dealt with. Right now, we're not sure if there might be some more challenging zombies that are a bit more rooted in reality, say maybe a tougher or bigger zombie with more strength and health, or a riot police zombie clad in armor, or if it'll be limited to standard infected only. But it's something I'm sure we'll find out more about later down the line. On top of the infected, there's also the added risk of other survivors outside your group. Not everyone you encounter in Walton City will be friendly towards you, some will be hostile, and while I didn't have the chance to try human encounters at Gamescom, I'd hazard an educated guess that these sorts of scenarios can get nasty real fast in a world where excessive noise creates a bad situation. Environmental sound triggers are going to play what I believe to be a large part of Into the Dead. We see examples of this in the trailers when a police cruiser's alarm is set off and likewise firing a gun will draw attention to you as well. When speaking to the developers, they told me that your surroundings will be important and sound alerts like this will be a very real threat. Now, this actually brings me to my only real concern about Into the Dead, Our Darkest Days, and that's whether adding difficulty through environmental triggers will be sufficient. I actually feel like this would have been a great game for zombies to have some special abilities. Being a 2D side-scrolling game doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, but it does result in some limitations when it comes to combat. From my experience, briefly playing the game at Gamescom, you are only really in danger if you made noise, and in my opinion, players are going to find this easy once they realize zombies stick to a certain patrol pattern. Environmental triggers also need to be implemented very carefully, as they can often feel artificial or cheap. Let's say, for example, you walk into a building and an alarm goes off, which draws zombies to you and you are overwhelmed. There's not really much you can do about that situation, and to die in this manner could leave you frustrated with your experience. However, if there's a way to turn off the power, maybe one that requires a tool or item you find elsewhere, meaning that you can either brave the building with the alarm now and risk a fight, or come back later to try and do things quietly once you have the item, you're going to have a much more rewarding experience, even if you decide to take the risk and die in the process. Ultimately, you made that choice, and you knew the risks. It wasn't entirely unavoidable. All to say, I just hope the developers consider whether they can achieve a substantial amount of difficulty in the game without it feeling artificial, using the tools they have available, or whether they'll need to bring in some things that weren't in the original plan, like, say, Special Infected. Before we get to the end of this video, I did just want to take the opportunity to play some of the exclusive footage I've been provided without me yapping over the top. So this footage will be of a scavenging run orchestrated within a police department with one of our survivors. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so that's about it for this video discussing Into the Dead Our Darkest Days, but if you're looking to learn more about the game as it continues through development, or you'd like someone's thoughts and feelings that has some experience with the game once the demo comes along in October, feel free to subscribe to the channel and I'll be sure to cover it when that demo is available. Equally, if you have some thoughts about the game, please do share them down in the comments section. I'd really like to share some early feedback with the developers from what you've seen in this video, any concerns you might have, whether you actually like the look of the game and just about anything else you can think of. I'm sure they'd appreciate some genuine feedback or support. Otherwise, I'd just like to say a very quick thank you to my Patreon supporters for backing the channel for as little as £1 a month to support what I do and get access to our game servers, Discord channels, and of course their name in the credits of my videos. You guys keep me doing what I do and I can't thank you enough for that. That's it from me and I will see you all in the next one.